Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at this despicable item. Now this was sent in a while ago with some other things and it's one of these uh, power leads. It's a two core one in this case with the figure eight plug there. But it has this uh, completely unsafe and illegal plug on the end. Claims to be along the line to the BS1363 or the UK style. But uh, as usual it's the uh, sort of fake version. Very, very small, no fuse inside, pinned to the wrong size and dimensions. Earth pin has uh, sleeving on it, going completely wrong, and there's other problems we've seen before. So if you've actually got a plug that looks like this, please get rid of it immediately because it's completely unsafe and uh, shouldn't exist. Now in this case, uh, say just a two-core lead, so what we're going to do in terms of destroying this, this end we're going to actually short out with a piece of wire shoved in there, and then this end we're going to connect to the uh, 230 volts, and we're going to use a 3 kilowatt water heater as a current limiting device. That's going to put in the region of uh, 12 plus amps through this, assuming the resistance isn't too high. And just because we can, we're going to use DC in this case, so uh, 230 volts DC rather than AC. So we're just going to basically turn it on and see how long it is before it melts and other bad things happen. Now, of course, we're doing that outside, so let's go outside right away and get the action going. Now, a quick look at the arrangement here. Here's the lead just plugged into this old socket and it's laying on the surface here, and in the end we've got a piece of wire just jammed in, effectively shorting out the two conductors, so nothing too surprising there. That's the converter for the DC, and that's where the mains power comes in. See, so it's just plugged in down there on the floor, and then obviously goes inside to a normal outlet. And the other thing we've got here on the back is this black lead, and that actually goes down onto the ground here, connects to this 3 kilowatt immersion heater just in the water there, and that odd rattling noise in the background is this thing, which uh, obviously is uh, starting to make some horrible clanking noise. So just set the camera up here, it's kind of quite a long way off, but uh, zoomed in there. And uh, let's just turn on the power and we'll see what happens. Now, I've had this on for about 10 minutes, so I'll we'll just turn off the power there, just checking the temperature of it. It is hot, but uh, not particularly the uh, sort of thing that you actually burn yourself on. So it is heating up, but unfortunately not to the level which is going to cause any kind of failure. So, uh, say 10 minutes later, it's only got too sort of hot to the touch. So we're going to actually adjust this into a different configuration. Now here's the new arrangement. Uh, all the rest of it's the same, including the current, of course. And what we've got here is the same lead, but it's actually been just twisted round into a large ball there. Just put a cable tie through there to uh, keep it in position. And uh, this is going to really just show that uh, if you actually have leads which are all rolled up, such so an extension lead or something, what tends to happen is that the heat then can't escape, because previously, of course, it was just laying on the surface, uh, lots of air movement. In this case, that heat is going to be concentrated in that small space. So uh, if you actually have an extension lead or something and operate it when it's rolled up, then it will get hot and uh, quite often be damaged. So uh, in this case, we're going to just turn it on and see what happens now. And of course, it should uh, therefore get considerably hotter than it did before. So the power's on now, and we can see there that it's actually moving slightly as the plastic is softening. And of course the weight of that large bit is sort of pulling down on the lead there. So as you see, it's still getting fairly warm even on the exposed pieces. And they're just sort of just resting on the surface. So again, we'll leave this going for quite a while and come back a bit later. Now this is after about five minutes, and you see that it's uh, getting a bit dark outside now, because I said this is recorded fairly late in the evening, but uh, nothing uh, particularly happening yet. I say this has been on for about five minutes now. It's uh, pretty much uh, drooped down as far as it can, and uh, the other part there is laying flat on the table. So uh, let's just move forward a few more minutes, see what's happening then. Now we're just coming up to about the ten minute mark here, and you see there's quite a bit of smoke now coming out of there as the sort of mass in the middle there is obviously heated up to a temperature where it's now degrading and falling apart. So uh, there's smoke sort of just curling away out the top of that, and that's certainly not uh, what you want to be happening in a normal situation. Now this is about two minutes later, so now we're in approximately 12 minutes, and we can see that the plastic there is melting significantly, and there's quite a lot more smoke coming off. That additional noise in the background is the water heater, as the water is now getting uh, fairly hot, having been on for sort of 12 minutes or so. But you can see there in the general middle of it, the uh, plastic has also melted and degraded. And now we have various uh, sort of flames and sparks coming out the back, so just leave this going until uh, something actually gives up completely.
disconnect the power there and also put the uh, exterior lighting on because now it's fairly dark outside. And you can see it's continuing to burn away there. Flames or whatever coming out and a fair amount of smoke still pouring off. And uh, that obviously is now totally destroyed. And the considerable amount of additional sparking there was due to using a DC. If it was AC then it would have just basically blown out once and that would have been it. But uh, DC of course has a tendency to arc over quite large distances. So on DC certainly the uh, arcs will continue until the whole thing literally has completely burned away and gone totally open. Now I've disconnected the power and uh, you can see there it's still smoking away so I'll just pull on this uh, wire here. You can see it's still uh, glowing red hot inside so that certainly reached a very high temperature indeed. You can see the whole thing now is just this uh, amorphous blob of black char so really nothing left of the actual cable itself anymore and to the whole front of that socket now is completely black with a soot, obviously that was white originally and um, the cable is totally destroyed all the way up to the plug itself and certainly uh, it's still smouldering away pretty readily there I'll just pull it around like that you see that it's, uh, it's just this crumbly black mess with glowing red bits still inside so that's what happens when uh, things are overloaded and more specifically when they're actually rolled up like say you would have an extension lead or similar but that's definitely the end of that piece of equipment and it's also the end of this video so until next time thanks for watching